are so slick. They might, be, might, need, might have to put them right here. No, that's still not going to hold them. There we go. That piece is gone. Hey guys how's it going so we are out here today going to be doing a truck tent camp with a lot of new gear that i've actually had for a hot minute now um, i'm out here camping with my beautiful girlfriend uh she prefers to uh you know operate the camera and stuff and not be in the video which is perfectly fine um but we're going to be starting off today by actually setting up the tent now we got everything unloaded i uh, still got a little bit of work to do with the, uh, the fire pit and getting it situated and then we'll get on to food and all that good old stuff. But coming in, we're gonna be using the Haseka truck tent. They sent this to me probably about two months ago and uh, I've just not had a, uh, I've not had a good chance to use it and I wanted to wait till cooler weather got here anyway. Tonight, it is, oh, it's a draw truck day. Uh, it's gonna be getting down to about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So I feel like that's about perfect. And then I don't wanna freeze my, going through the death, so thought we might as well, you know, try to ease her into things. So rolling her out, as far as the actual specs uh, for this tent, I got what I think is the, the standard version or the uh, the large version. I'd have to take and go back and look because um, I know that they make a short bed version, but I don't remember if they make one for an extremely, uh, not a, extremely, but an oversized bed. main body of the tent is set up at the very beginning uh, I did screw up and I used this uh, long front pole for one of the uh, you know cross members for the dome tent so I had to go back and uh, redo that but that's what I get for not setting it up at the house first and you know trying it out for the first time in the field so now what I'm gonna do is, is take and set it in the bed in theory, Be able to pick it up. Oh, the problem is, got all this grass that's clinging onto these straps that you can put down to the ground. Aha! I don't think we lost anything or anything coming down to it. No, let's go. So now we just line this bad boy up on the outside. The corner. Sorry, come here real quick. And then we take these hooks with a coated outside. And then you just find your nice nifty place, like in this case, just hooking it to the metal wheel. 
Actually, that won't work. We'll hook it right there. And then we'll need to do all corners. And we'll go, we'll do the two back corners first because I think those are the most tedious. So we got our two back corners relatively adjusted to the same spot. And then we should do the same with our front. I think we'll try that to see what happens. Hello. Okay. Well, we had a product malfunction, so that's not good. I barely tugged on that and the stitching ripped out of this pull down strap. So that is something uh, that Hasika needs to uh, address for sure because that's not good. Not ideal at the very least. So the main thing though is, is we got this center one left. So I'm going to take it down to the safety chain hookups for the ball. And if anything, we can. I guess that's actually kind of what these two was more or less mentioned uh, meant for anyways, but that one is a bust. It fits the body of the bed just fine. Um, and I know you might see some debris in there. It's because when I open this thing, the door was unzipped, which is fine. So I mean, this is a brand new unused tent. All right, so now all that's left to do is get the rain fly on it, even though tonight we won't need it, but I want to take and do the full setup. We'll put the rain fly on. And this is a lot, this is a very simple part of it because we have the awning part that indicates what the front of this is or where the front of this is. So that's that. And everything else just buckles on. The only hard part is, so, I mean, you can, I guess since it buckles, it probably should have done this on the ground. But bada bing, bada boom. Alrighty. So now all we have to do is clip these in on each corner. And as far as the. Uh, fine tuning adjusting we'll do that once we get them all clipped on this front flap which you could take and stake down to the ground or you know do whatever you want to do with it we're going to take and put it in its full awning so you get these heavy duty these are they feel aluminum they got to be aluminum because they're just like oh wow hello okay well you got to put them together i thought they might have that type of extension part to them so there is definitely two bottom pole design. Okay, that is a very interesting pole design. I have never seen that before. So these right here you take and you put you push up on it. You push up on this by taking the pole and bending it so that there's you know pressure against it. And I mean that's really not the most because there's no there's no eyelet or anything for it to come through. So, I mean, this is going to have a lot of downward pressure, so it's, it's nothing like that. But if, like, anything was to jerk up on it, it could rip it out of the, uh, out of its hold. Okay, take these in. And this is, this will probably fall because i got to take and get the guy lines out, which I'm sure that's in the, uh, in the bag. Oh, Jesus Christ. In the bag with the stakes. In this tall grass, you take and flip and drop something the size of your arm and you'll lose it in two seconds. So there's actually four lines. So now we'll take and tie off to actually it's got a, it's got they got loops, so we'll take and pull a stake out of the ground. Just your average run of the mill aluminum stake. Get an idea on the ground where we want this. it good find a spot without rocks okay and then we'll tie ourselves a tension knot let me stick jesus christ handy this isn't the best type of cordage for that but it shouldn't get too windy tonight oh 
I don't think I finished pushing that stake in the ground over there, but I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. We got everything nice and tight so we can start setting up the inside of this. And then I've also got an awning that I want to show you guys. Uh, and it's super easy to set up. I've already set it up once. Um, and it can, you know, it's, once again, not necessary for what we're doing today, but just want to go ahead and show you guys. You could use it as gear storage or whatever you needed. So. And then, finally, we're going to set up this uh, awning slash sun shelter by off-roading gear. So, yeah, I've already set this one up, so this one will be a lot quicker. Uh, and I will say, this thing held up phenomenal in uh, really strong winds. It was actually set up in the backyard during uh, Virginia's portion, my, like my southwest Virginia area. Um, of what we got from the Hurricane Ian, or Ian, whichever one you choose to go with. Um, it wasn't standing up. I took and I set it down and opened the back vent that you would use if you were using this as like a sun shelter on the beach. Um, and that allowed plenty of air to pass through and you know, nothing got damaged or blown away. So that says a lot about this bad boy in my opinion. Okay, so you probably you can't really see it now with the uh, sense the flaps down, but this is the backside fit. It has the vent on it, which will allow a nice cross breeze if you want it. But this one's really easy because there's no sleeve that you have to uh, to use. You just take and put your uh, pole into the nesting slot. And then you start clipping these up along the middle. Or I guess I'd say along the sides up to the middle. So I used to have to stick these uh, these poles and sleeves that I just automatically start to walk back away with them. Whoop. And just like that, she is uh, pretty much done. You just finish clipping it out, and then there's one support piece for the middle uh, stands that you can use to open up the ventilation at the top and once she's set up it's easy to pick up and move because she's going over here and if you wanted to just use it as gear cover you could actually take and stake it down like that we'll see if we can take and just lean this up against the side of the truck and then run the bungees something and See what happens. There'll be some. There will be some tall grass underneath it. Um, but we really only need it to serve its one main purpose: to cover some of this stuff to keep it from getting dewed on. And yeah, so these poles have a corkscrew top, so you just run it into the uh, plastic eyelet that you got right there and twist it in. And then that right there will hold fine and dandy. And so I believe the way this is really intended to be is you kind of prop that up there. These bungee straps, which I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this part of it, but we can hook that there. Then we can come underneath and hook it to safety chain line with that other one or one side of it and then we hook it to the body like that and then this thing is good to go we can put our gear under here i'll take and stomp down a lot of this grass and stuff which goes on the inside a pocket on the poles so that you can add a little extra tension as well as support to the roof here and then to keep it centered there's a nice nifty tie strap 
We got everything set up except for our bed and everything, but that's very easy. So we're gonna go ahead and get a small fire started. And you know, we're not out here on a full uh, bushcrafting endeavor. So we're gonna make things a bit easy for ourselves. I've got one of my homemade fire pucks right here. And if you guys are interested in my personal recipe for these, then uh, just let me know in the comments. And uh, I can do a video on that later because these aren't just makeup pads dipped in um, wax. These are like my own personal recipe that has an actual fuel element to it. And I like these more than just doing the straight up, um, you know, dipping it in wax. Because once you do that, these things get super hard and don't really want to take... It's hard to get them fluffed up to take a spark. But with this, they remain waterproof and are still very, very fibrous. And will take and light from a ferro rod very, very easily. So make sure we got our sparks coming. Come down. There we go three strikes and the other beautiful part about this is it's uh, once it gets going it's pretty windproof um, and burns for a uh, burns for a very long time so once since that's going there's no need to rush and you can also kind of skip a couple steps in your fire building process and uh, you know start with some larger pieces of uh, well, essentially start with kindling and just go from there because that thing's going to burn hot and heavy and the fuel element of it will actually kind of seep down and continue to burn even after the cotton is gone. So, works really well. Um, so, you know, if you want to take and spend some time making them, uh, I think it's really worth it. And it's very inexpensive uh, in all truthfulness. So, if you're willing to invest the time and you have the place to do it, because you do have to have a very ventilated area. It's not something you can do in your kitchen. Um, you would you got you got to be outside and... Um, there is more of a danger element to it. It's not something you want to be doing with the Boy Scouts. Um, but it makes starting a fire very, very easy. So we're going to get this going and situated. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll do the bedding first or go ahead and go to the food because your boy here is hungry. My girl is hungry. And uh, the main thing is we're just kind of watching the breeze. We're being very cautious. I know that on video it looks like we're you know in like the driest of dry grass but the ground's actually very moist and we're just watching the weather watching the breeze and we also have a fire extinguisher with us so we're playing it safe all right guys so it is time to make some food it's going to be kind of hard for y'all to see that with this thing but i'm going to start the four cheese pasta we have to take and bring one and a half cups of water half a cup of milk and a tablespoon of butter to a bowl and then we stir in the contact the contents uh, and reduce heat and let it simmer for 10 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get that kind of, we're gonna get the water boiling, then we'll move it from the outside so it can simmer and then move to the primary heat and start doing our baking. We got our camping moon tripod right here, our cooking tripod, put it together. Y'all seen that in the video, so there's really no point in me showing y'all that again as far as the assembly process, because it takes a minute. But yeah, I'm using the Volcan Titanium set to get our one and a half cups water spilled a little bit there we go in the outer cooler since i knew he was making that i pre-measured the half a cup of milk so put that in there open up our butter this is the bulk can long titanium utensil set drop that in there which i know you can't see what i'm cutting the butter but it's all good so got that put the lid on i don't know if this is going to be able to sit part of it's going to have to sit outside of the ring i believe this is just a ring that or not okay it kind of fits perfectly to be honest so we got that then we pull this pin out in the center since we're trying to boil it we'll just lower it right above those coals so i will get back with y'all once that is boiling and we start cooking the bait boil very very nicely this stuff takes about 10 minutes and on this heat if i can figure out a good way to do it without burning myself the bacon should only take about 10 minutes um, in the pan so that is good go let's tear this open and don't worry we're not leaving trash we're just uh i'm just setting things down 
for the time being, make sure we get all that good old powder in there. And we're going to set this off to the side because the heat from that right there will help that uh, will make that simmer versus like boil. Um, and then that area right there is where I'm going to act going to be a little bit too hot. And we can use these pieces of wood right here as something to potentially rest our pan on. Not too sure how I'm going to do this without burning the ever living beans out of myself. But next task at hand is to cut up the bacon. And uh, I'm using for the first time this pocket knife that um, OER. L A sent me. I, I can't pronounce the name very well, but I'll link all this stuff will be linked in the description, non-affiliate links. Jesus Christ, bro. So far, that's what this side knife is. You know, check out my last video if you want to see it. Do my best just to take and see how many of these pieces of bacon I can fit into this Chinook folding skillet. And the top part of this lunch box that I found is going to come in very handy for, for holding these extra accoutrements because I'm going to really Try to lay these bad boys in. That piece is gone. Okay, so the Chinook folding skillet fits right at nine pieces of bacon. I think the perfect spot for it. I mean, they're already sizzling. These are supposed to be heat resistant handles, so I just want to keep a keep a watch on them. Handles are not melting, so that part of it's working good, but we can take and flip our bacon. I forgot to bring tongs, so this part of it's a little bit more involved than would be normally. Some of these are sticking together, which would make this part a lot easier if they'll all do that for me. Just like a nice little marionette line. I gotta be careful because this is a uh, an aluminum pan with a non-stick coating. Mm. Alrighty guys, so I will get back with y'all when this is done and we will make ourselves some sandwiches. Bacon, that pan, those are still probably out. Oh, we got a few pieces of bacon done so we can each have one sandwich and then we'll fix the other ones here in a bit. Our pasta is sitting off to the side cooling so we'll take and cut a tomato. We're going to use this tray out of the top of this lunch box as our uh, condiment holder essentially. I'm really digging this kniff here get out the most important part of the sandwich which is the mayonnaise gotta go heavy on the white stuff well hello geometry can I put that there can you see it yep oh, okay oh it's hot oh it's hot Oh, and we got, like I said, we got plenty of bacon. I just want to take and show you guys what we was, uh, what we do be working with here. So next up, I'm going to take and pull out some nice oven roasted turkey. Off a nice fat tomato. Hello. Switch these two around. And we got ourselves a nice BLT. And we got ourselves a nice BLT sandwich. We're gonna make some more of these. We'll eat our pasta. It's done. It's just four cheese pasta. Nothing, not rocket science. So next time we see y'all will be whenever we're making our bedding situation. And so I'll talk to you then. Alrighty, guys. So. Everything is set up. That is the interior of this bad boy. Just a big old bathtub floor. So I've got my two Ectos king size wool blankets right here in front of me. We're going to use one of these to line the floor of the tent. So we got ourselves a nice 100% wool uh, carpet effect going on. This bad boy should be more than enough to cover the entirety of the base of this. But definitely more than enough. And I'll straighten that out once I get up in there. Here we got our hay trip sleeping pad. So this thing right here is like two shoulder widths of mine apart, which would be more than enough for me and my girlfriend because we normally sleep on our sides anyways. So we'll take and roll that out and get it to self inflate. Okay, so for the most part, that is going to just take and inflate itself. 
And then with it only getting down to uh, about 45 degrees, we'll be more than fine two bodies in a tent like this with this and if we just use the wool blanket. But since I brought me woman with me, I wanted to pull out all the stops and brought a couple extra covering devices. We've got our high speed daddy Wooby blanket in multicam and then we got one that I've not used uh, yet. But this is the uh, Zuby Lives 32 degree down sleeping bag. It's like a rectangular bag that you can unzip into a quilt. Just this thing right here alone with the 650 field down, once it gets lofted up, should be great since we, you know, you'll have two bodies in here heating the thing up. And like I said, it unzips, zips down and around to open it up at the bottom. So you have yourself a nice big down quilt and with everything else, will be nice and toasty so that is the sleep system we'll let that inflate we're just going to chill by the fire once everything is prim and proper we'll hit you up with one more video i'm um, just kind of showing you plus we're going to set things up and play cards and i've got a little that little gas lamp and i'm gonna see if i can set that up in here since we'll have like the wool on the floor of the tent we should be good and we'll leave the front open for plenty of ventilation that's going to be that's going to be the setup for tonight they're so slick we might, be, might, need, we might have to put them right here no that's still not all hold them there we go. All righty, good morning, everybody. Um, last night was an amazing night's sleep. This hay trip pad done phenomenal with two people sleeping on it, very comfortable. Um, we ended up waking up right around 7.20ish. Um, and then we took and got a fire going, um, just taking and, you know, warming up some breakfast. And, uh, and yeah, all that's left to do is pack everything up and head out. So it was a, a solid 10 out of 10. My, my woman had a very good time camping. Um, so that's, you know, that's a plus. But that's going to that's gonna do it for this one, guys. So uh, once again, if you want to take and check out any of the gear, non-affiliate links, um, you know, not paid sponsorships, none of that garbage, but uh, most things uh, will be in the, in the description. So that being said, Please take, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share your friends. Check the links and descriptions to my other channels. And uh, hit me up in that comment section, everybody. So um, until the next one, adios. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs>